So oddly enough, uh, Tom Lamino was asking Jeremy if he was going to get his own IMDb page as if Jeremy uh, controlled such things. And he told me, I'm not sure Jeremy understands it's a joke. <laughs> can, is it just like Wikipedia? Like you can just make one if you were no like idea. notable? <laughs> Why do you keep changing the Googles? <laughs> <laughs> oh well are we waiting for mental or is mental not coming tonight no he's not coming tonight right. i'm gonna push he keeps in. putting us off i think he prefers being a listener these days and we'll find out we'll probably get some listener feedback anyway so probably. we'll find out are we ready so, yes yeah you're recording already so oh, the power is not working on get out of town check oh. it off your card okay. wow what show are we on? We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> backup. It's backups Ooh, and backups. backups. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of Lemma Champ or Lucky Track Dog League you run, SCC or NASA, we won't discriminate as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news, and notes in the world of amateur endurance racing. Whether it's on the spot, hello, sweet, or we're lucky enough, and Chrissy gives us just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And Mental is still not here, but we are still Everyone Racers. Thank you for coming back and listening to an accepted episode of our podcast. It's episode 202 already, amazingly. In HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, 202 is the status code for the uh, request that has been accepted for processing, but has process has not been completed yet. So while you're accepted here, process your E1R bingo card, because you probably could have already gotten a mark off with general Wakeman problems and or electrons don't work. If if we ever get to show 404. I'm so excited by that. I was going to say the same thing. We just need to not have that show. <laughs> show 404. We'll just skip it Did not, load. <laughs> not, not found. Yeah. That would be actually hilarious. <laughs> Uh, nobody will remember this in 404. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go on to what you're working on, Jeff. What are we working on? Hey, you know what I'm not working on? A uh, car. Z? All summer, I said, I'm going to learn how to do some higher tech stuff. So I'm not just playing a speaker into the podcast microphone. Didn't yep. happen. Didn't get done. Anyway, uh, no, I'm not working on cars. Uh, uh, Pre-race weekend, I always have to spend time with the fam because that's how I get away from race weekend. I did wash my car, though. I, that's you just were going to stop at wash. And I was what? like, wow, Jeff. I mean, it's still <laughs> exciting that you washed your car, but. Yes, I, I got most of the rubber off. I haven't gotten out there with the little rubber spray. and Oh, that stuff, works, long. that stuff just melts it right off. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's only a few places left. The 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 wash that I did was was pretty complete, but I'm like, it's a light colored car, and I've never had one of those before. So I'm like, I need to wipe the inside of the door frames. They're gross, and I need uh -huh. to. Yeah. Uh, this car better not get used to it. I know, really. <laughs> um, yeah, and I am. Uh, I or I actually did order like the front license plate holder and a few other things for the car. So you're gonna, you're gonna bother? Front, you're gonna. Do I have to. I'm, I'm in Jersey. Uh, that, does that stop you before? Does not have it. The Corvette does not have it because my wife doesn't mind paying those bills. Uh, I got the kind that screws into the into the hook, okay. so it won't okay. actually make any holes or anything up there. Okay. But yeah, that that's what's going on over here. Uh, family stuff. I flipped two thousand hamburgers and hot dogs with the uh, with the local police department at a fair the other day, uh, literally last night, uh, because that was a Boy Scout community service opportunity and my son being a boy scout i, I shouldn't got they be flipping in. the burgers you uh, must have smelled terrific after that i actually old... didn't flip the burgers i was, I was on the bunning and wrapping team mm, that's usually my that's usually my jam and mm. josh was on the deliver cheese slices mm. <laughs> to the cooking <laughs> one burgers for, one for me so he no no it's more like more like ah! as he burns his hand and yeah, drops it into the true. flame. So yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what's going on here. Chris, you have lots going on. Let's talk about I what do. you do. Someone's got to be working on cars around here. Uh, so the Mazda, the car we're actually racing this weekend, did an oil change. I switched to Rotella gas truck 5W30 synthetic instead of our oh. usual synthetic 10, 5W40 because 
the Mazda calls for 520, except in Mexico, then it's 530. So I say, well, we're, I want to go by the Mexican standards, but we used our usual Rotella because it works wonderfully. But our oil pressure was really high. I think it, the oil was a little too a little thick too being a 40 high. weight, so it's not going to flow as well. So let's try a 30 weight this time. So let's see how that goes. Right now, the oil pressure is lower, but still great, just not off the end of the gauge high. So that's good. <clears throat> um, gave it a once over. It didn't really need anything. Put a new muffler hanger on it again that I think will work better this time. It's longer and more flexible because I've underestimated how much the exhaust extends when it gets hot. Like it gets several inches longer when it's hot. I keep Can, can, can I do that. my impression <laughs> of what the muffler sounded like? Yeah. It sounds like this. Zoom, Zoom didn't like that. Yeah. Zoom didn't Zoom, like that noise? No, oh. Zoom, no. Zoom, I got the first I was, two. I was That's banging it. the microphone with a, yeah. with a hard object. And you didn't drive yeah. it all weekend. And until the, la <laughs> the last well, last Well, when, when it's cold, it's worse because it, then it hits on the inside. And then when it gets hotter, it, it's, it gets to a sweet spot. And then when it gets really hot, it hits the end. So it anyway, not my best exhaust, but it's going to work for now. I uh, gave it a bath too. Um, only thing to note on that car is that it is, is developed a seeping oil leak from the timing cover on the firewall side of the timing cover. Is that new? It is new. Hmm. Yep. Uh, if that is it, due to the higher pressure. Or temperature. Yeah, it could be. Some sort, of, some sort of seal. Well, that timing cover I put on 85,000 miles ago with Honda Bond, and it's been fine ever since. But So it, it's possible that just time to change it, but it is a pain to change because you got to take the crank pulley off, and the crank pulley is not keyed to anything, and it's just held on with a bajillion put pounds of torque, and you got to like pin the cams and all kinds of crap. I don't really want to do that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, it's loaded in the trailer. It's ready to go. The Corvette is registered and insured. And we took it to Costco because <laughs> what else do you do with your 84 Corvette? But go to like, Costco. Let's see if we make we, it. We don't take ours to Costco or we go to Sam, we go to Sam's club here. Uh, Yours is also the across the street from your house. We true, but no, there's not a Costco anywhere around us. No, your Sam's Club is my Sam's Club is very close. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, but we we like BJ's better, but it's like thirty minutes away. Who doesn't but like BJ's anyway, better? But the reason we don't ever take our Corvette is the dog food fills the entire trunk. Well, okay. we'll tell yeah. you how it went. I actually didn't post those pictures, Chris. I'm sorry. We uh, no, it we made it. It was um about fifteen miles, and the car actually did fine on the way there. Everything worked. <laughs> It, on the uh, way you know, there. The way there. <laughs> I just all, heard all four gears overdrive worked. It was reasonably smooth. The brakes worked. It seemed fine. Uh, we filled it up with gas while there because Costco gas is cheap. Uh, driving home, I started to think the car was running a little rough by the time we got home. Yeah. Like, not all eight cylinders are firing. So, yeah, I gave it a look once it cooled down a little bit. Turns out the number six plug wire had fallen off the spark plug. So, I put that on. And it was better. Yay. <laughs> well, we like, we'd step on the gas and it would just, it would feel like you were in fourth. It was just like, uh, and we look at each other saying, I think that's gotten worse. Yes. I mean, it's not a fast car. Let's, let's get it that out of the slower way. Slower than it was when we were on yeah. our way. 205 horsepower in a car of that size. You know, we're used to like the Civic has 205 horsepower at, or did like at the wheels. So it's, it's a little different. But anyway, it's uh that that's up back on. I did another ozone treatment inside with the vents running. I did another one today because it, once it's sitting in the sun baking a little bit, some of the Fine. smell comes yeah, back out. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep yeah. doing that for a while. Um, also pack the truck and trailer. We are ready to go, basically, Pretty except much. for coolers. Chrissy, what have you been doing? I have been doing the rest of the cooking. It has been a lot because we didn't do a whole lot of cooking uh, before the weekend, and so I have been uh, work burgering and. Uh, just prepping all of the race camp stuff that needed to happen. Food, packing, shopping, all that good stuff. So are, are we camp sharing with the uh, with the Garage Heroes people? No. Not. No. Okay. It, we uh, ended up having kind of too many people on both like sides. It a lot of too many people. Massive. Yeah. So we're expecting Alan to actually show up with people. But... He's bringing a car, so he best bring people or have people because he's bringing his own car. Yeah. So we, yes, we just talked about it. And then we decided we were up at like mm, close to 40 and we were like, oh, that, that's like a lot. No, that's too bad. Uh, yeah. So we, yeah, we decided. And then we've got other 
pe- people that might be showing up, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, yeah, we decided we'll hang out with them. They'll be there. We'll eat our dinner together. Just not the same dinner. Yeah, got it. Yep. Ready? Mental? Cool. Nope. News and notes time! Hey, everybody. It's Jeff again. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're aware of this, but the COVID ain't gone. The Delta no variant is a, the Delta variant is a son of a bitch, and now my wife is pissed. It was just announced today, August fourth. We're recording this on August fourth that the New York Auto Show is canceled due to COVID concerns. It was going to begin. It usually is in the spring, uh, but obviously it got canceled. Um, so this was the makeup date. It was going to begin on August twentieth. That is sixteen days from now. And they just canceled it this morning. Uh, the marketing arm was in full swing. They had already been on the Kelly and I don't know who the frick show, whatever that show is. Um, it was scheduled to be at full capacity. Uh, New York City recently released a proof of vaccination for all indoor public events rule. And the organizers cite both the dangers of mass infection and the new requirements as a reason for canceling. So no New York auto show for uh, all I guess about two years now. Not really surprised. Mm. Not surprised to know. No. Someday. Maybe we'll get press passes when we go. Yeah. Maybe we'll have quite the quite We were the on the list for yeah. 2020 when it got canceled. So yeah. It seems like a bad we we run events, so we know about uh the possibility of doing something like that. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't blame them at all. It's what I do for a living. Yep. Uh, I know. And I do on my hobby for some reason. Uh, recently wear, reported. Wear your mask and sorry, wear your funny. mask and get your gosh damn vaccination, you idiots. Go ahead, Chrissy. Oh, you can just uh, check off somebody interrupts Chrissy uh, or if you'd like. Oh, I should be playing. Shoot. Um, <laughs> recent re- re- recently reported by Mexican newspaper Reforma, uh, Sergio Perez's dad, Mexican politician Antonio Perez Garabe, has said that Cancun could be the next in line uh, for a second Mexican Grand Prix by 2024. It'll be in addition to the existing race at the Adramo Hermanos Rodriguez in Mexico City, which is confirmed at least uh, until at least 2022. English Story by The Drive will be linked in our show notes. That would be a great adventure. I would Probably have to be there. a street circuit, I would imagine. I can't imagine them building an actual Grand no. Prix course in Cancun. No, I, I think the article said it was going to be a street circuit. Like the one in Miami is supposed to be a street circuit, too. Yeah. It's a shame. Those are not always that interesting. Anyway, uh, speaking of auto shows, before COVID, we attended the Philly Auto Show as our first time with press passes, and it was fantastic. I don't want to be there with all the regular people. Yes, it was. Yep. And that we witnessed. Before COVID, we just yeah. didn't stand with people. And- not only did we witness the world premiere of the Twatara SSC, I think we were actually the first media outlet to post pictures because we did it about three minutes after they took the thick cover off the car. So you you actually legitimately saw it here first. You saw it here first. <laughs> right. Uh, we covered it then as probably vaporware and then covered it as they claimed they were accused of faking the world speed record. And then, well, they're admitting it. They didn't break the speed record. Crazy. Even the Batmobile, they can't break the speed record. Sorry. That's dumb. It's yeah. vaporware. We, it's we a car. Could probably they have put won. this to bed now. Yeah. I, I will not <laughs> put another SCC Totora Twat. news to whatever the hell they call what? it. Well, I seriously, put... they call it Twatara. Like, really? You, yes. If your first uh, word of your car is. I think no. it means tarantula, doesn't it? I'm not sure. Probably. Someone uh, thought like it was it? a good idea, but they didn't like. No, they didn't have an 11 year old boy in the room to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twat. Uh, yeah. But anyway. No, we had, they had 10. They had yeah. them. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, I will not put another news story about this vaporware car unless they deliver it to an actual customer. Mark my words. Thank you. Upcoming races! Champ Car will be running the Lifeline 24 Classic at VIR this Friday to Saturday. What a wonderful track. 58 cars, 23 are BMWs. That is boring. Yep. 11 Miatas, zero Hondas of any kind. Mm -hmm. Nine Porsches. Uh. Only 944s can you have. So someone's going to be doing a clutch. And (laughs) an 89 Celic. They're going to put it on the trailer because the clutch went out. Oh, I figure someone's, <laughs> d- someone's dumb enough to try. Yeah. Uh, and then there's an 89 Celica, a Mark That's 1 cool. Golf, an cool. Ultima, and a Firebird. They're not particularly interesting. They're just better than a 328i. 
a 330i, yeah. a 325i, mm -hmm. yep. a 525i. Maybe a they might add a Boxster in there. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, they're getting, they're it's cheap. usually AER that does the Boxsters, isn't it? I don't know. Yeah. Because I don't think Champ Car There's exhibition. Yeah, probably know. maybe exhibition class. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, our main topic tonight is because Woo! we are all headed to Thompson Motorsports Park in lovely Thompson, Connecticut. That is Western Connecticut. Uh, middle of freaking nowhere. Middle of freaking East, nowhere. Eastern Connecticut, like Did northeast. Say, you said Western. I'm sorry. Northeast, northeast corner, Eastern. like yeah, almost go, Massachusetts or Rhode Island. Yeah. You got to go 95 forever or mm -hmm. not. Uh, but anyway, there are 99 cars, according to Eric Rude. No, it's eight, according to me. Oh. 18 BMWs, eight Miatas, six Hondas, two Porsches, and two early 80s Escorts. Huh? Really? I, I found one. because I, So I, I, wrote, wow. I found one, and I was like, wait, there's two. The, the big news that came out, and this was by Eric Rude, is there was two Lancia Scorpions. He texted me about it, and I said, that news rocked me like a hurricane. <laughs> yep. Uh, Sunbeam Alpine, that was uh, around before, but didn't get any laps. And, of course, the Ford Tempo. I like that the ratio of Porsches to early 80s Escorts and Lancia Scorpions right? is all one-to-one. -one. equal. That Amazing. is real racing, people. And lastly, WRL is going to be at High Plains in Colorado. I'm sure I, it's going to be an awesome race, and I have no idea how many cars there are because I had to go try to find all this stuff, and Mental wasn't here. So hmm. that's probably going to be that, That's Porsches. a bit... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Nope. Go ahead. That's a bit out of the area for WRL. Are they usually doing Colorado? Uh, that's they usually don't go that far west. I think they're yeah, trying to expand a little though. That's a bit good of a uh, yeah regional expansion for them. Well, if anybody's racing with them, let us know because um, tell us about your Porsche, BMW, or Miata. Sure, <laughs> something like that. Recent results. Lucky Dog was at Oregon Raceway Park. On Saturday, Top Dog was Team B, and just one minute on the same lap afterwards was M80. Two laps behind that was finally racing. It's a six-hour race on Sunday. Top Dogs were Team B again. Three laps behind them was Screaming Chicken Racing, and I hope they have a Firebird. And then Mad they Greek better. Grocery Getter was a few laps behind them. I'm sure everyone had a good time because it's a Pacific Northwest where most people are nice, and it's Lucky Dog where most people are nice. And it it's looked like... I'm sorry, Saturday's cars, it looks like just about all, but maybe two, I think, had some laps, some, most of them pretty good. So that was a pretty good day for Excellent. most people. Yeah, that's right in the heart, I think, of their 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 core audience. So Yeah. Yep. Also in the heart of the heat dome, which has fortunately subsided a bit mm -hmm. now, so they're not racing in 110 degree temperatures. Oh, still a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> listener feedback time i don't have to yell today you're yelling for me this is oh. great that's right Jazz uh up. okay uh this week i posted a video of the corvette running and driving and that was before we took it to casto and a bunch of you thought it was so cool with a k um greg o asked if this if this is your face man with a stately looking gentleman standing in front of an 80 very 80s corvette uh justin n suggested that sporting uh, sport, uh, sporting some chrome three spoke wheels was a god awful, but maybe period correct, but they were scary looking, which I don't want them. Uh, Michael K was looking for Jeff to be sporting jorts and new balances. He replied with, uh, or Jeff replied with a fantastic jorts license plate that we rocked on the Z for a hot second. I, I would like to see three spoke wheels on other 80s cars but the ones that are on the car like the directional fan turbine what things they call them the salad spin no the salad the, now the salad shooters are later the later ones those are the oh, okay. 17s but still they're just so period correct that it'd be such a shame to, gonna, to take them off you have to go to the gram and look at the wheels mm. yeah they're they're great and what you don't see is when you take them off on the inside the the little spokes you see are actually veins to move air through the wheels because you're going to be um, going so fast and then braking so hard that you uh -huh. need yeah it's mm -hmm. it's just the brakes are little and the car is heavy okay, and okay, it doesn't fine. go very fast maybe, maybe that too no they look cool though okay cool. Uh, anyway on the gram our listeners were just as excited about running and stopping corvette we got some hella sweets and shout outs to corvette magazine oh my gosh so many it was an editor's magazine. choice didn't you know that it didn't say that it was, but that's okay. Well, we'll have to move the license plate frame. <laughs> <laughs> Until the other one comes back. That's right. Okay. Uh, I suck at racing. Lemons racing didn't happen because they're nope. not racing at the Still moment. We could probably take race. that segment out until 
Okay. They yeah. come back. Until they come yeah. back. Maybe so. Okay. But, um, but we had a race. We but because yeah. we always do. We always do on Monday. Uh, Monday night, nine o'clock. Join us for some great racing with the crew. Uh, light, friendly, fun. Jump on our social media. Ask us for the password because it is in hosted races. And there is a password just to keep out the people who think we're going to be serious. And we also have a Discord. So that's in the show notes. Uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, here's what we did. We went to Charlotte in Formula V's and we were going to do the rally cross and then the Roval and the rally cross, like the, like I racing was just like, nah, no, you can't do it. So we all sat there on the, on the uh, discord and said, Hey, is it working for you? No, is it working for you? No, is it loading for you? No, is it loading for you? So then we started talking. Tyler was going to set us up something in, uh, in, in, in uh, Corsa. What, what the heck is that called? The other version. A set of Corsa. A set of Corsa. Thank you. Uh, but we didn't actually do that. And then we all looked at um we all looked at Wreckfest and we decided we really need to do a Wreckfest night. So maybe we should try that someday. Uh okay. but it turns out that it was only that track and Formula V's that were a problem because uh the Roval worked fine. So you know, 45 minutes later, we got to do the race uh tyler won uh i believe second place was aaron the Wartburger thief and uh everybody joined us and it was a good time the formula v's on the roval are are yeah slow but fun yeah we maybe we need to keep formula v's to the tracks at which they were raced in their time period like lime rock summit point maybe yeah some tighter yeah. Formula V well, on a big track are kind of like, huh, this is slow. Well, the Roval has a lot of tight sections. And if you screw up, you're into the wall. So I suppose they, maybe not enough of a V because you don't slide very far. Yeah, they, they didn't do real well, like diving into the bus stops. So people just okay. started like cutting the bus stops. <laughs> so, no way. <laughs> yeah, way, right? You know who never cuts a bus stop? I mean, if she Great. knew, she might cut the bus stop. <laughs> Well, in real life, she doesn't. Chrissy's okay. mom. Hi, Chrissy's mom. Hi. Awesome. Yep. Don't cut the bus stop. Don't cut the bus stop, everybody. Nope. Uh, so three weeks back was our 200th show, and we were going to celebrate. We have, Now we have no idea when mental is showing up. So we have no idea when we're going to do the Ask Me Anything show. But we are going to do an Ask Me Anything show. I feel like he's teasing us along, like, oh, no, I'll be back in just another two weeks. Uh, yeah. It's fine. We no. think 205-ish. We're not really sure. Uh, but so we are open for any questions that y'all want to submit to our ask me anything. Just email us, text us, hit us on the social media, whatever. Just put like Carrier hey, pigeons for the ask me anything. And then as soon as we know exactly when it is happening, we will publish an actual Zoom link and you can actually watch us record the show. Oh, we'll gosh. go live. We can actually turn on your mic and you can say hi to us. You can scream. Upcoming races, that would or be say, amazing. That would be cool. Um, or say what Donnie's waistline favorite cookie, whatever it is. Um, yeah, we can have a good time. So yeah, so uh, keep abreast of our social media and check that out. And we're going to do an AMA, and it's going to be awesome. And we are reviewing our past shows. Until then, so uh, this week's prompt is. What is the most fascinating thing that you learned because of the show? And I'm going to be honest, us hosts, we don't know everything. A lot of times we got to do some research for a show or we invite a guest because they know a lot more than us. So, uh, Chrissy, you go first. Uh, I, don't, I, well, I don't know. I feel like most fascinating. I don't know if this is most, but I, I don't know. The most interesting um, thing you learned. How well, I think my mindset changed on people that the people behind different types of racing. I, I feel like I think about um, the now that we like know somebody that has done rally, I've gotten to know more about um, the, you know, the RC and TQs and, you know, we watched Formula One and you know, learn more about the people of Formula One. So you think about it more of just then I, I care more about different types of racing because I have thought more about the people. I'm going to say that. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, I'll do mine. So Chris can, I, I've read what Chris is going to say. So I'll do mine next. Uh, 
I loved the episode that we brought in Hamsa. We brought in Hamsa because we were like, oh, he's funny and he'll say like tech stuff. And then he's like blew my mind on all of the thought that goes into designing the interface between man and machine and like how much thought he puts into it. And it was tremendously surprising because every time like I look at his stuff, it's all labeled like really stupid, like chaos and uh, use only anally and all this other stuff. So I, I, I never know what his switches do until he says, Hey, this switch does this and this switch does this. And I was just shocked and amazed at how much knowledge he had in that area an area that I didn't even ever contemplate of being an area. And that's like ergonomics, I guess. For the, for the switches in the car, you just have to try to think like Hamza, which is a little dangerous. But when you do it, it starts to make sense. Yeah. It was yeah. fascinating. Well, Chris, Agreed. What, what did you learn? The thing I learned 200 shows? That, that I'm really surprised at is that people will actually listen to us jibba jabba. <laughs> really? <laughs> Don't you people have anything better to do? I well, mean, I guess you're in the garage or them. something. Shh. We have them people, that. Uh, right. We have people that right. want to listen. Don't tell them. I mean, I, I, I'm thankful and surprised, but holy crap. I didn't think anyone would listen. I thought it would be Chrissy's mom and, and like two Bill. other people. <laughs> right. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yep. So uh, thanks, everybody. Yeah. yeah thanks that's a better everyone. answer. Yes. That is a great answer. Mm-hmm. Main topic time. <laughs> Who's doing the intro? I thought you would, but before we get there, I want to say something amazing. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> amazing? Are, yeah. It is under 30 minutes since we hit record and we are at main topic. This is a like a record. This is like old like beginning of the show when we kept it under an hour. Like really, I, I could delay it a little more. No, I'm just admit, things are just flowing and it's just <laughs> moving <tonight. laughs> This Uh-oh. just in. Uh-oh. <laughs> this just in. Uh, luxury mammal from hot state purchases car on Carvana based on Jeff's recommendations. Oh, what? And in attempting to prove that he is actually on meth, it was a long roof TDI. Wow. Interesting. All right. Okay. More news to come on later shows. I'm on the maybe. long roof. Donnie will join us. For our have... live show, and show <laughs> whatever, whatever that is, that happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't know. Hey, Donnie, it... good luck with the car. Yeah, um, I, I, he actually talked to me. It's he, he actually, uh, it, it took delivery today, and he's not sure one hundred percent about his experience on Carvana. So he is going to tell us about his experience with the purchase. Um, and it is a, it is a diesel gate repaired model. Oh, mm-hmm. so it has a really long warranty. Yeah. On the Huge. powertrain and all of the electronics. Well, that's not a bad way to buy one. Oh, of those. That's, that's yeah. a good way to buy a Volkswagen. Yeah. 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 Hey. Not, you're not yeah. wrong. All right. More to come. Great. Do, 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 Back do, do, to the main topic. Go for it, Jeff. Okay. Thompson is this weekend. If you're listening to this, you're probably on your way to Thompson or you're not a lemons racer or you're on like the West Coast. Do we have West Coast people? I guess we do. Probably. Uh, yeah, probably. We have a guy so, in Sweden. That's true. Yeah. Erling, where you been, man? We haven't heard from you in a while. Oh, Hit no, that's not true. He said stuff. But anyway. Oh, does he? Anyway. Okay. There you go. He, he's not going to Thompson. No, he's not going to. No. So, Erling, we're going to a track in Connecticut. <laughs> this show is going to bore you because we're going to talk about Connecticut. And we're going to do a virtual track walk. It's and true. we're going to talk about all the things that you need to know if you're on the way to Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. you read the instructions. That would be great if you did, but he, you need some reminders just to keep yourself in check and your teammates in check for serious. So it's first, your dumbass teammates. I don't and I, I remember this. We did this last year, but the driver's meeting is probably going to be in person, not on YouTube. I remember trying to watch it on YouTube in when we had no internet, trying actively to watch the video and it was not, not a thing. So you probably have to show up with your dumbass friends and listen to uh, Eric. Uh, Eric. Yeah. Jay was there last year. No, Jay. No, I don't no, think Eric Jay was, was there. Well, it was last no, year. I think this year we've got 
we've got Eric and Manny and Chris Haas are, are our judges. So I'd imagine Eric will be doing the meeting. I would imagine so. So come over and listen to him when he tells you to. Uh, spectators are allowed this year. So that'll be fun. Extra people walking around. But that means that you should be ca- extra careful when walking and driving and riding around the paddock because there will be a lot more people there this year. Feral children. They're back assuming so so uh make sure that you have your when you're checking in checking in is such just take one second checking in has been usually so stressful for this stupid track they they try different things every year please be patient You'll zero of them see- work well this year they're letting people in yeah, thursday. thursday what a wonderful idea it, instead it of is instead amazing. of the log jamming at 7 a.m. on Friday morning outside the first gate with one poor but, lady right. trying to sign everybody. Uh, but I think uh, Lemon Staff has been at the front gate because I'm pretty sure I brought Kim something last time yeah. because she was there. Last but any, anyway, you'll probably have to stand in a line. So just be nice. Just like, take a breath. If you're late, it's your fault. So just just take a, take a breath. Yeah. Can I say something about yeah. the panic of everyone checking in on Friday? Sure. It was getting over the bridge and getting your paddock and getting all of that because everybody was arriving at the same time. It was, it was hell. And and, and this is going to be much better because everyone's spread out in time wise, because you can start arriving a little earlier, which we'll talk about later. But just saying that even if you no matter what time you pull up Thursday and night might have a line Friday might still have a line. Just be patient is what I'm trying to get at. But make sure that you have your license ready at the gate. Uh, they are going, you're going to have to sign. You're going to get both of your wristbands there so they don't have to track you down anywhere else. So make sure you have that ready and available. Uh, tech schedule is out. It is on the website. It is on the website because I think I was there today. Um, but also it should have been emailed to you. So make sure you check on what time your time is. But they will also uh, tell on the radio, on the um, loudspeaker, unless you can't hear the loudspeaker, which I think might be a thing if you're in uh, far, far away land. So make sure that you uh, know your time, show up at your time, probably not show up a little bit early, but uh, make sure you're there and go through tech. That's uh, great. Social distancing rules are going to apply to your team, but there's no ma- actual mask mandate this year, but make sure that you're being cognizant. If you're sick, stay home, all that good stuff. Uh, don't ruin it for the rest of us, basically. Um, if you've not been there, all of the paddock space is is very small. Uh, there's a, tiny. As we said, there's 99 cars coming. So some of them have multiple cars. Uh, if you are not in one of the garages, don't even think about coming down to the tarmac and the garages uh, space because that is for all the people that have the garages. So all the rest of the stuff, I believe, is free space. But uh, be cognizant and be considerate about your teammates and make sure that everybody's got room because uh, eventually and occasionally it becomes everybody on top of each other. And so that's a little difficult. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, a decent portion is also grass. Mm-hmm. So if you're in the top tier, third tier, second tier, you know, there's there's pavement, but there's also a lot of grass. Yeah. So if you're not, if you don't have a garage, just con- just think about grass. You're, you might be on dirt grass. I don't think yep. it has rained. I don't know that it's going to rain, but if it does, it becomes a monsoon and you're in a puddle. Uh, but also being on grass, I think it gets pretty buggy. So you might want to bring your extra bug spray. Yes. Current forecast is favorable right now. It looks like mid eighties and sunny most of the time. Whoa, so, whoa. Very yeah, small yeah. chance oh. of showers on Sunday right now, but especially yes. in the back part, there's a little lake by one of the grasses. So yeah, there is mosquitoes if you're yeah. over there bug Just spray is your friend all all of all the things you don't want yep. to end up playing that game um wear your gear to gear tech this is the best thing that's ever happened uh especially if you the have people been... who do gear tech oh yeah and i've done gear tech and i have you know people have said here look in my pants and i was like uh that's disgusting so show up with your stuff on especially it helps when you get off if you're doing testing day which hopefully you are uh, once you're done with testing day walk right over get your gears teched usually 12 to 5 ish is probably about that yep. time we use uh but where and where you're bring your hot don't forget your hans please uh half the people get over there and then you realize that you forgot it and you can't do it if you don't have it um there are a couple places they're not close to get stuff if you need it there's a walmart and two part store uh that are the south one to the south one exit and then webster mass is the north and they have some more other stuff gas stations are either north or south very little around the track it is a golf course across the street a whole bunch of houses you got nothing uh so plan to stay there if you're going to stay there and if you are 
camping or, or if you're um, going to a hotel or something, it's it's far away. So uh, Track has a restaurant and ice cream shop on site. Uh, ice cream is new, which is very exciting. Usually yeah. a Dunkin' truck there, uh, they'll stay as long as sales are good. So if you keep buying, usually some at some point they'll say, hey, we're going to leave soon if nobody comes over to buy stuff and then people go buy stuff. Yes. Jeff. Did you say there was a golf course? Yeah, it's across the street. Yes. I've the, never noticed that. that the track oh, come on. Owns a, the track is also a golf course too. Like that's why they have golf cart rentals and there's so many golf carts around is because it's also a golf course. What? Like, look, so there was a, you didn't blown. watch a video. I never knew. A couple there was years a ago. Look at the Google maps of the track. I think I we might need to Google do this. <laughs> so a couple right. years ago, one of the wrap up videos had, it showed a team having to hit their, their car, with, car a, with golf balls at the true at the golf I remember course that. yeah 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 i had I, no idea that that was like that a golf was course, across like the street. Was really yes you could i think you could even see they took video of what was happening from from where we were standing like you could see it from the track anyway okay so golf course across the street don't go golfing i guess you didn't want to if you wanted to Golfing is a stupid sport. Don't go golfing. Fine. And you're, you're there to <laughs> like, go racing and hang out with friends. So don't do if that. If you have a race car, why would you ever golf? I they're this probably the same amount of money, really. And time suck for the mat for that matter. Equal enjoyment? Not sure. Anyway, uh, there is a potluck pig roast dinner. Whoa, whoa. Right. So uh meat. this is this is an advertisement. Uh there there will hopefully be some meat, but what you need to do if you're going to attend is bring some food. I don't care what it is. I if you have a bag of chips, if you buy a salad at Walmart, you bring bring more than a bag of chips, people. Don't be I, chintzy. Yes, bring whatever you can, but if you don't show up with nothing. Because when or you show up half of a pizza. Half of a <laughs> eaten pizza. Legit that happened at one of them, and I was like are you serious? And they're like, this is all we have. And I was like, if you put it down, people will eat it. But that's still disgusting. It was don't do that. Too. It was cold. It was old. Whatever. Don't do that. That's poor form. But uh, please bring, if you're going to bring sides, you have a little bit of time to plan if you're doing it on Thursday or just buy like at Walmart, they have the things of like macaroni and cheese or uh, pulled pork or something like that. You can throw it in a crock pot. You can I don't think we need any oven. more pork. Yeah, tater oh, right, salad. Right. Okay, fine. We're gonna have a ton of tater salad now. Anyway, bring a side. Uh, please bring some serving spoons if you if you can. If it's not too much trouble, trouble, and if you have your own plates, forks, and chairs, and a drink, that would be great as well. So there is meat. Bring your other crap because I think we're gonna be a low on all, oh, all the rest. Otherwise, stuff. they're gonna give you a a um, tongue full of meat in your hand. That might that's happen. All you get right. I so you can then put some surprised. barbecue sauce on that in your hand. And it's like and a walking might... taco, but it's a really crappy walking taco. <laughs> I, I, Don't uh... eat the shell. <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. your hand. <laughs> this meat tastes funny. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Uh, Ow. sauce after the first bite. Ow. Also, so I want to do a, a small soapbox speech. Um, if you are showing up at, at said potluck, uh, please be patient with uh, whatever is going on because I have run a said potluck and it is very stressful for the people that are trying to organize it. So just be a little bit patient. Yeah. Don't be the one that shows up at seven o'clock and say, where is everything? I thought it was supposed to start at seven. Yeah. Shut it's up. That's not how it works. Yeah. Ask them, you're the first person here and no one has showed up with their food. Yet. And you didn't bring Ever. any food. And you didn't Ever. bring any food either. Smithers, uh, the Cheetos, please. <laughs> uh, do we know the team name of who's running this pot? Well, Glenn Farney and Bright Ideas are doing some of it yep. and there's and another team doing the other half of it i don't remember who two, they are i think there's another two teams but uh and uh we might be helping um so there's that we can um and there's a live band on saturday night whoa, whoa! right so our team is is featuring uh it's not our team band because that would be scary uh but uh greg smith from are you suggesting Talk i don't know how to play i too. am i am I'm well, doing I mean, that. <laughs> next time we're at Jersey, we'll that. have kind of close to 3 p.m. team band because it's Eric's band and Eric's on our team. Okay, fine. So. I, I think sure. I have a slide works. I can do more than one turn. Uh, you don't need to. It's fine. <laughs> so yep. there's that. Um, yeah. So come join us. I don't know where it's going to be. I assume HQ somewhere around our garage. Yeah. Or exactly. up if. Or if there is a bonfire, who knows? There's no electricity up there. Yeah, it's probably going to be by HQ. The band is at least, but there will be a bonfire on top of the hill. Hey, Jeff, would you enable screen sharing for a moment, please? Oh, I could do that. 
So yeah, this, that's this what is... I know about the Arachnid Shack. What do you what are you doing? Because he's trying to pull up the maps and stuff. Is he? I am I'm trying oh, okay. to show. Well, never mind. So Jeff. Yes. Racetrack. Racetrack. Golf wow, course. Wow, golf course. Look at that. That's a racetrack. Golf I didn't course. Like to fact, mention that golf when you course first... is bigger yeah. than racetrack. Look and see. You know the the dirt parking lot at the top of you know like when you're coming in and you go around the the turn four yes. essentially up just on the other side of that dirt parking lot it's is like the, golf the golf club course. It's like right there. Yeah. They've even advertised that there's dinner it's the, happening. It's up. the like raceway go there for dinner. golf club. That's, just, oh, that's where the that's restaurant where is. Ice cream is. Yeah. Oh, I thought ice cream was going to be like. So there we go. Track. I had no idea. You you yeah. can save that for when we talk about the track. This is like the start of every uh, i racing thing. What's We're right? going to Thompson. Oh, people can't see. <laughs> yeah. If you can't, unless see, you're on the YouTube. It's fine. It's that's not cool. really interesting. Now I lost it. Hey, oh, well. while we're here, can I talk about the paddock? Please. Please do. All right, so here's the paddock situation. Here's the sitch, and it's not my gut. It's not my belly. I ain't got no situation down here. Um, track entry, we already mentioned Thursday. Thank God. Uh, but it is 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. So it's Yay. afternoon only. Um, if you do arrive after 10 p.m., go to the Walmart, just like we all used to do, and sleep there. They're, they love it. They love it when you go in drunk at 2 a.m. and buy stuff and harass their people. I don't, don't know don't that they love it. The people. Last That's year, they we didn't even, were not as excited about it as they have been We didn't in the even past. harass them. We just were walking, and that was enough to bother people. Yeah. Uh, Friday begins at 7 a.m. again, so if you do not make it by 10 p.m., you must wait until 7 a.m. Racing, I think this is like the bizarrest schedule that we run into. Um it, the, the, I should say the most unbalanced schedule. Saturday is nine to six. That is nine hours. Sunday is noon to five, five hours. It's because Connecticut can't start till noon. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, I, I think this uh, plays into the, um, the, the strategy of the race. And totally. we have used it to our advantage to win such race. And we have used it to our disadvantage to lose such race. Totally. Uh, the Cressida, because uh, I was talking to the Cressida boys, uh, and they basically said, like, yeah, this schedule screws us because we can't do two and a half. So they have to stop twice on Sunday. And they're like, that kills us. So, yeah, if you have a car that goes two and a half hours, this is your race. We're going right. to find out because we're close in the Mazda. We're, we're, we're going to try. Close. We're going to go for it. Uh, yeah. Testing day run by the track. It's only $150, which is pretty cheap for what we do here. Is that your hand up, Chrissy, or are you just excited? No, I'm dancing because that's it's, so cheap. It's so cheap for the amount of time you get. It is. It's all ahead of time, so you must go to the Thompson website and sign up there. Uh, you can register, but you can register on the side. I thought you couldn't register. They, they apparently say you can. It's more money, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in the past, they have allowed passengers and instruction, which is, again, the only place in the East where we have ever, in the last, like, 10 years, been able to get passengers. Five years. I won't say 10 years. Um, yeah. Uh, testing runs from 10 to 115. It's open session. You just lap, lap, lap. And then they close for lunch. And then it's 140 to 5 o'clock. So that is a ton of awesome. time awesome there are no sessions they don't stop they do hot pulls they, they have flagged some sessions when things have gotten bad obviously uh, but yeah they they're live for many hours on that day so yeah cool uh anything else about the track before i go on about the nope. track day? okay track walk they allow track walks. Another thing that is fantastic about this track, uh, the track says it is 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Lemons says it is 6 to 7.30. So I, I don't know when it's going to happen. Somewhere in there. Somewhere Get your there. shoes on. Get We're yep. going for a walk. Uh, no motorized vehicles, no bikes, no nothing. Just walk, okay? Uh, Chris, do you want to... Are we doing something official? Uh, are we gathering? Well, yeah, we have not planned any kind of official thing. If you are really interested in coming along with us on track walks, come find us. You know, we'll tell you approximately where we're going to leave. Uh, newbies, yeah. 
uh, I have no problem taking newbies out and really talking to them about what a track walk should do. Track walks are incredibly important, um, especially if you haven't all tested. Uh, double if you're new, triple if you're trying to go fast, quadruple if you're trying to win, infinity if you just care about driving and want to do good at it. Do a track walk. And we could even split right. it up into two groups if we need to. Yep, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so we already mentioned that the paddock and the grass is all there. Um, there there's a black lake there. There, it's basically like tiered parking. There's some like lower grass and then some upper grass and then some upper upper grass, and it kind of goes up the hill. Uh, but yeah, th there's a lot of um, there's you know a big parking lot and then the grass around it, and you can basically go anywhere. Um, but no paddock on the hill by turn 10. Uh, Chris, you want to put that map up again and show where that is? You can't miss it. It's the big hill. Yeah, <laughs> it's not on the hill. Don't be on the hill. Yeah. If it's slanty, don't be there. If it's yep. next to a parking lot, be there. Um, yep. It is tight. So if you have like some sort of giant open trailer that you don't need, you could leave it on the other side of the track. We've yeah. done that in the past year. In the infield yeah, of the do. of the oval that they're not using is a yes. great spot to dump yes. stuff and street cars and anything you're not using, put it over there. Make some. Uh, room. Glenn actually camped there last year. They were allowed that. No, that was Scott. McMichael. It was Scott. Oh, it was Scott. Scott, Scott you're right. He had yeah. his Scott. little shower. He had his little dog. A, that like, was a great he, spot. He, he got to sit there it. and watch it. It was quiet. Yeah. It was yeah. Well, quiet until there's a race going on. But other than well, that, nobody bothered. At night. Him. Yeah, he said it was great. Yeah, I don't think they want you to have access back and forth, but when the track is cold, you can get there. Yep. Uh, where am I at here? I lost my lost my place. Fuel. Fuel. Uh, mm -hmm. pavements. Pave. We already mentioned the pavement. Uh, yep. you can park trailers down the grass. Fuel yep. at the hot pits. Yes, there are two places where you can fuel your car, at the hot pit. Same rules apply. You must be in every single piece of equipment. Uh, there is uh, uh, bike rack barriers near the hot pit. You cannot park your stuff between the bike rack barriers and the RVs. There needs to be room for emergency vehicles there. We'll tell so, you about it because somebody will tell you about it and then we'll tell you about it because that's where our cars will be. It's yeah. always someone in a Texas Giganticus edition diesel <laughs> dually something or other that always just parks park it there. Right in the middle. Yep, and thinks it's no problem. So um, I, I, I seem to remember that fuel typically is pretty inexpensive here. Inexpensive meaning it doesn't cost you a left testicle for each gallon of gas that you're going to buy. It's track prices, but it's not like, holy crap, track prices. Um, yeah, uh, pretty reasonable. Uh, they usually bring in extra tanker trucks so they don't run out like New Jersey Motorsports typically does. Uh, yeah. You can, you ha there's no attendant. This is not New Jersey. So you have to have your credit card at the ready and you have to swipe it at the pump. And your credit card company is going to get pretty pissed off with you about the seventh time you try and buy gas at the same gas pump in the same day. So yeah, do something with your credit card company. Tell them what you're going on. But you, this is the top tip to finish your transaction every time you buy gas you have to put the card in a second you time do. you do that's yeah. how it knows you're done because otherwise you go off to buy gas again you put it in the first time it just spits out a receipt and doesn't do anything you're like what the hell why Whoa. doesn't this thing Sometimes work it doesn't right? give you a receipt right. they're very finicky it's yeah true so yeah, yeah. they're not just, easy to use just know you have to put the card in a second time that finishes your transaction and frees it up to the next person yeah, it tells you that on the little screen yeah but no one reads that i read it i thought that was pretty obvious i shouldn't okay. say pretty obvious i read it and then i did yeah. so good there we go uh yeah so uh top tip this is my thompson top tip and this is serious because i've screwed it up i screwed it up on test day and they called me in and they yelled at me last time the blend line at thompson is no joke it is short it is at the fastest part of the track and it is at the fastest part of the track right before it, the track gets skinnier so we're going to talk about the track walk but basically at the end of the front straight is where the blend line is and it's not hidden it's not hard to find it's not around a turn and there's two things you can do wrong and they're both wrong and cut it out each time get to the end of the blood line and then enter traffic after you have checked that you're clear and asshole don't pass people by violating the blend line when you're racing 
There's a third one too. Oh, there's a third one. I don't. Yeah, know it's bl- bloodline related. It okay. is if you are coming down the track toward the right hand side, and someone is coming out on the you know into the bloodline area, don't just drift yourself left without checking for traffic, because there's not enough room as the track narrows and has a curve there, and then your center ends up hitting a Civic is doing 110 and spins it around and bends a trailing arm. Don't do that. Sure, sure. It, it, mm-hmm. Thanks. Top, top safety tip. Yep. Check your blind spot before merging into traffic. Well, or just even if the, you're not the one coming into traffic, if someone else is, don't just move over. There's room for three if everyone stays in their lane. Cool. Yep. Great. So let's talk about the track walk. We're going to do a turn by turn track walk, what we've learned. Hey, interject, please, you guys, as we go through you. Everyone knows this track well. Yeah. So the so straight, it's not quite straight. Is uh, do the you first thing the map about up? it. I think that, that is very helpful for our YouTube. Uh, I like having, why even... don't you, Jeff, why don't you put a map up? You can look forward and do it because I like having my notes to make sure I'm hitting all oh, points okay, that yeah, I have I here. That. Thank it you, though. It's not, not even a straight. Like it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, like it's called it's, a straight. But... Yeah. And you're on full throttle the whole time, but it, it definitely has a kink to it right where the track narrows and the blind line is. So be careful and you're going over a hill and, but you can get some serious speed down the straight. If you get a good run out of the last corner. So um, uh, would you like one with uh, just like a colored circle or would you like one with like, you can see grass and stuff. doesn't matter. Whatever you find. So oh, okay. uh, the other thing about the straight is that it goes notably uphill in the braking zone and then flattens out and goes slightly downhill. So uh, it's really, that's about the one board it gets, it gets, it flattens out. So you're going to have extra grip before you get to the one board. So try to get, start your braking there and you get it. You can break really, really hard there because the suspension is loaded. So uh, I find usually we can just throw the anchor out around the three board. That's way you can, you know, if you, if you brake hard at first and then gradually ease off the brakes, that ends up working out really well <clears throat> as you, um, now I have to have, sorry, I have to exit full screen. Where is, how do I do that? There we go. Need my notes back. So yeah, brake hard, get off, you know, ease it off by the one and you can trail your brakes into one really nicely. It's a great trail braking corner to carry your speed from the straight a little bit further. By the way, I'm right. so mad that this says golf club turn being that I never knew there was a golf club there. <laughs> and that it like, says raceway golf club. Like, <laughs> I just call this one, two, <laughs> three. We've never called it. The golf. Uh, wait, no. wait, wait, clubhouse turn. Yeah. Oh, I'm so mad at myself. <laughs> this is you ever now. did like a mind blown? Like what? Yeah. What? Anyway. Okay, so one is a right hand turn. It is initially off camber, but then once you get past the apex, which is kind of a fairly traditional apex, you get the camber back. So a lot of times you'll turn in, you'll find yourself over you know, understeering, oversteering, sliding a little bit. But then when you get past the apex, you get a bit of grip back. And the curbing at one is a friendly curb until it's not. The like, inside curbing is friendly. And the outside is too, until it's not. Because until if you go over the ditch. Yeah, exactly. So it, you can get to it and you'll still have a little grip. But don't go beyond that because you're gonna you're gonna break something, like a splitter. A splitter on a Honda Civic. Yep, happens I don't know what to you're break talking there. about. No, nope, no clue. Never did that in my life ever. Nope. Yep. So, uh, but you know, by the time you're just past the apex, you know, it, it's depending on how you trailed your brakes and if you weren't trailing, you're back to full throttle. If you were, you're easing. You're doing a transition uh, as you come out of one and two is really just an extension of one. And a setup for three. It's kind of a decrease or so an increasing radius turn into a tiny little straight between two and three. I usually track out about two thirds of the way to the left. You don't need to track all the way out there at all. Um, so that way you can get back to the right to set up for the left hander at turn three. Yep. A ter- turn three is a pretty standard 90 degree left. Uh, before we talk about t- the turn of three, can we talk about the uh, flag station that is here. I was about to say, and the inside oh, is a is on. a wonderful flag station that way you're in that straight between two and three. Look at that flag station because you can't see what's around that corner. So that flag station is a helpful one for you. Th- this is a big fence here. So you cannot so the see. the inside of three. Yeah, you cannot yes. see from one side of the track to the other. Yep. It's trees and crap. So you need but, that flag station. Absolutely. It's a pretty standard 90 degree left though. So for your, your norm, for your racing line, uh, it is slightly off camber on the outside. 
as on your way out of the corner, but then it goes uphill right afterwards. Uh, your end of braking coming into it is just before your turn in point. So you, you might come in, turn, you'll then lose some grip coming out of it. And if you don't go off, you'll get the grip back once you cross the the, the you know bit of pavement that goes pie in your right hand side and you get up uh, onto the straight coming up to four, which is I, the straight I was between. Say, I love using this entry exit way this this unused portion here there's usually on the cones right. yep. on the right there's usually cones here keeping you from turning there but that becomes a great visual marker for um for your for your turn for your exit being the turn yeah great call if as soon as you can see that put your eyes on it and then about half a second later you're then looking up the rest That's of the way what I, was gonna say. I was like don't yep. get fixed on that because it's very no. easy to be there and not look up but yep. it's it's a blind turn and you visually can spy that cone it's like the yeah. first way to reorient yourself to the rest of the track totally and the straight between three and four is like the end of straight and one coming to one in that it goes uphill and then it doesn't. So you need to kind of get your braking done while you're still uphill, or at least vary your pedal pressure. Because once you crest that hill, you're not going to be able to brake nearly as much. And that's why so many people go off in turn four, the clubhouse turn, Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a very tight right hand hairpin. Am I right in thinking that this is the tightest turn that we do in Lemons in our tracks? It's pretty darn tight. Yeah. And the, yeah. Uh, the bigger thing that on this definitely the probably. tightest hairpin. Yeah, I think like, you're probably in a lot of cars are going to be down to second gear here. And the so. problem is that there's a lot of people will take it. We it you can go try to go three wide people. You go you often will go too wide. So it is it's a hard turn and it's a lot. It's really easy to, for people to mess up and go into mm -hmm. depending on if you're going inside or outside. Yeah. If you're um, on the outside, be careful of who's on the inside and if they overcooked right. it because yeah, it's yeah. tough because it's, it's off camber and it's downhill. So you've got no traction. Uh, we've uh, also discussed how hard it is to properly look through this turn mm -hmm. because a lot of times your head and neck restraint will not let you turn your head that far. Yeah, um, go as far as your head and eyes will allow. You end up looking exactly, through the right side like, window. You know, yeah. you're, you're scritching your eyeballs all the way to the corner to see this. Uh, can I give another visual marker? Yeah. There's a, I don't know if it's a telephone pole or a sign pole that has a sign right in here. Um, there is not like deceleration markers, but there's some kind of sign on the outside. And that's usually where I am marking my braking or my okay. turn in, not my braking. Your turn in. Yeah. And end of braking is usually right around the turn in here too. If anything, you can trail it. A little bit to get some rotation as you come around that corner too yeah um, i'm definitely trailing this the, the line that i like best through this corner if no one's around is a uh, a single very late apex yes gets you around the corner you kind of go it's almost go like a little wide coming in to get that late apex because you have you're not going to go any faster it's a terrible corner but if you can give yourself a chance to get a good run out of it for the little straight between you know coming up to five and six that's a good run especially if some people didn't do the corner right if you get a, just a little jump on them you can make some passes after you come out of that tight corner this is a great passing section i love passing people here yeah uh so that's yeah that's a nice wide section of track between four and the five six sweeper so you can do it watch out though at, at what's around because people will cut on the inside and try to do things and the track also narrows down as it goes under the bridge so be careful about people coming into you as the track narrows back down. But uh, if your car has a lot of grip, it's also a pretty good place to pass on the outside as long as you get that pass done before you cross the surface onto the oval. Because that's what you're doing. You're coming under the bridge, going onto the oval. Here's the um, bridge, everyone, on YouTube. This, is a, this can be done a couple of ways. You can double apex it. That works fine. Um, you can do kind of a single late apex, which is usually kind of my, I do like a half first apex, really, like not really. Um, and then like that that late apex coming out of it because that really gives you a, a good run onto a what's probably the second longest straight on the track, I think, is coming out of five, six into the, uh, into the bowl. 
Um, the, my key for the apex on this one is there is a triangle of newer pavement between the other bits of pavement. And when you see it, it'll pop and you'll, and you'll get it. That's my key for the apex. Uh, those of right you watching there. on YouTube, my little, my little magnifying glass is right where it yeah. is. Because you have to be very careful on your track out of six. There is curbing there, but it's once you're over the curbing, it is a ditch yep. and it will hurt. So be careful. That's why you want to go for that later apex at that triangle thing, because that'll make sure you're not you know, washing out too early, which a lot of, a lot of the ditches even right before the curbing coming out of six, because so many other people have early apex pushed wide, because as soon as you go over uh, the, the surface onto the oval surface, you lose all of your camber. It goes to positive camber. So you're sliding down off the track. The track has less grip than what was under the bridge. So you've got to get your cornering mostly done right before you cross into that. Now, uh, those of you who do a lot of iRacing, you will notice that in iRacing, you go around the track this way. Counterclockwise. In Lemons Racing, you go around the track this way. Clockwise. Clockwise. Yep. So it's a, it's a very discerning thing. The first time I, I was like, I love Thompson. I'm going to do this on iRacing. I was like, I, 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 I don't know what's going on here. Wrong way. Wrong way. Yeah. So now you're on this nice little straight coming up to the uh, the bowl or the, the part of the oval, the stock car oval. We don't really get to use the banking. We have There's a, an inner part of the track that we usually go on. Uh, I think there are two good lines here. Um, there's an inside line and an outside line. And then sometimes in traffic, you're going to be somewhere in the middle. The inside line is as soon as the pavement starts to you know, exist to the right of the oval, just stay on it. Hug it tight all the way around. That is the shortest route. Right, and right th- here where my, yep. my little Exactly. Stay, stay all the way right, all the way around the inside, and then spit out however it's going to work on the way out. It's fine. That is shortest route. It's not a tragic line. But in the testing that, that I've done, uh, I think the, the what I call the outer line is faster based on our lap times. And that's where coming between five and six, you stay left. And there's a line of cones to keep you off of the banking. And if you stay left and you break, you stay on the gas much longer than the people on the inside. And then when you're on the banking, you can break much harder and turn much harder up on the banking. And so you do that. And then you have to actually adjust your, your steering input when you get onto the, the flat section because you don't have as much traction. So you kind of give it a hard turn in ease off when you hit that lower section and then, you know, go as, t- go as hard as you can, as you then go through for a l- single late apex, you know, two thirds of the way around the corner. I love that line. Yep. On the way out of this corner too, there's, if you did it, there's two ways that are good out of it because you cross back up over onto the oval and a spot that a lot of people like to be is the harshest transition between them and it upsets the suspension. So either you can stay nice and tight, right on the inside corner that gives you a nice smooth one line or if you look at this there's a spot on the track you can see where um there's like a there's the yellow paint kind of still exists because people haven't gone over it as hard go there and you can jump out onto the track a little early and point it like the star of thompson or like the it's kind of in the middle of the thompson logo down the side and then you don't have that upset too and that brings you kind of it's a, a nice way to pass people to coming out of it if you have the speed yeah, this is a great spot where you really need to do the track walk yeah. to really understand what's going on in the pavement in here, what's going on on the angles, what's going on the different textures, and where it is kind of safe to cross back and where it is not safe to cross back. And by safe, I just mean it's going to be a bump and it's going to upset your suspension or it's going to be smooth and you're going to be faster. And when you're coming out of here in the actual race, please keep your eye to your left to see if someone's passing you on the left, because too many people get shoved real tight into that wall that don't need to be like everyone can play nice. They'll so everyone will sort themselves out on the straight, you know, don't be putting people on the wall there. All right. So coming up out of the oval, yeah, we're going to, yeah, we're trying to clip the apex with the, where it leaves the inside once over the bump, um, there's a there's a there's definitely a bump there and really i like again i like to have the apex exactly where the pavement leaves on the left 
And if your car is has decent brakes, stay on the gas until you're over the bump, or at the very least, only do a lift to settle the car. Don't brake before the bump. Get over the bump, and then you can brake really hard in a straight line before you start to turn left in the chute. So people just care, you know, stay all the way to the left, all the way into that. I don't think that's as fast. If you break in a straight line after you come over the bump and you actually come out to like mid track ish in the chute, which is turn nine, then turn left so that you end up being against the left side of the track. Yeah. Uh, let me just real quick, just cause I think Chris did some shorthand there. The pavement the oval pavement and this part that says the chute are two different surfaces. Obviously we've yes. talked about that before, but the bump is kind of a, it's kind of the length of the pavement scene. It's not really mm -hmm. like a single bump. It's no, kind it's of the, it's the entire track. way across. When you get yeah. off of the oval onto the road course again, there's a bump all the way across and, yeah, it's, and it's, 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 it's totally obvious, you know, it's there. Yeah, and it's totally just you know they want the rain to go this way, you know, to the mm -hmm. uh, to the to the inside of the oval track, and then to the outside of the road course. So it's kind of a ridge. Yep, it's not an imperfection. It, yep. it's a but ridge. it's up. It's upsetting if you're trying to be braking over that. That can upset the car. If you're not, if you're still loaded up in a corner going over it, it can upset the car. So you kind of get straightish over the bump, still gas or at least only a lift, brake afterwards. Uh, can we out, talk about this half. flag station too, real quick? Yeah, it's great, Jeff. Go ahead. So this flag station, it is probably if you are not used to Thompson, you will be like, "Oh my God, I'm driving straight towards humans." Yeah, and it's they're behind like plastic armco, so they don't even look protected. They are. There's concrete there. They probably um, that for a while though. But you are looking cool. straight at this flag station. You can see this flag for a million miles. You cannot miss this flag or you're an idiot. Um, but it can be discerning. It can be, you know, it makes your stomach hurt a little because you're driving straight towards humans. And this undulation of the pavement where you might not have all of your braking because your steering, your, your suspension might be lifted, you know, like not compressing at the moment. All of a sudden you're breaking less and facing humans and they don't look protected. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm not going to do that again. Well, that's because you didn't and do the turn. People pass in this corner too. Oh, so you've got, yeah. a, you've got a lot going yeah. on, right? Yeah, like there's, you have to make on. sure that you're going to transition. You're breaking correctly. It's fast still. And you've got a lot of people that are passing on the inside because they feel like they've gotten better shoot out of that little straight and there's people and there's a flag. And then you that's have right. to turn to a blind corner. Or the and people I that think... break before the bump, if you, know, you don't, you realize you don't have to, you can go around those people if you break afterwards, yeah. things like that. I think this is the most difficult, not the most important, but the most difficult turn on the track. It has the most nuance to it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So after the shoot nine, you want to be at the left side of the track. There's a little tiny section, maybe 50 feet where the track is straight. I like to get the car straight and unsettled in that little section you mean settled yes sorry section. straight and settled in that section to get ready because 10 really is only a setup for 11 it is a 90 degree right hand off camber downhill corner so you know line is fairly standard but know that you're not going to have a whole lot of grip your track out is at the curbing all the way on the left um, you don't, you am I putting that in the right spot? I'm yeah, you sure. are. Yep. So track all the way out there. You're on the gas. There is a spot though. You're coming up on 11. You're going to need, except for the slowest cars, you're going to need to at least lift to set the nose. Some people are need to break here. Depends on how, how your speed and your cornering prowess, um, but at least lift to set the nose. And then there's this corner is so tough. It's the setup for the long straight. So the earlier you get on the gas, you can carry it all the way down that long straight. It is very deceptive going in because it looks small and you cannot see your way out. But you absolutely can carry a lot of speed through the corner because there is a ton of track out. And 
as you get two thirds of the way around the corner, you go up a significant hill yes, where it's all of a sudden do. you're going to have all the traction you could ever want to turn if you find yourself understeering coming into it. So, but you've got to then get your, get your, get your steering done because at the crest of that hill, you lose all of it. And then some, because it's a pretty significant crest of the hill. So we, we should mention that this is, this is a mountain here. This, yes. This uh, is, yeah. This on your is... right through here is the hill that we said, don't go up there. Don't paddock up there. That's not for paddocking. That is for spectating and for a bonfire and yeah. stuff like that. So, so the natural path of this track is, you know, they, they cut it down. So this is not a hill here, but there is definitely some remnants of the hill here. Yeah. So, and by you, here, just go to YouTube, everybody. You, you got to <laughs> see this on the map. It's, is right as you're, well, or when you run the track, you'll, you'll, you'll get it. And you're like, Oh, that's what they're talking about. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so I'll back up for a second, lift out a 10 to set the nose back on the gas earlier than you think you should, because you can carry more speed than you think you can, because there's a lot of track out you can't see and an uphill you can't see. Get your steering input done before you go up over the hill. Otherwise, the can, car can get really spooky over that hill. And then flat out, check your mirrors. Make sure there's nobody doing it, you know, passing you. Because this is where all kinds of passing goes on, oftentimes three wide. Look at your flag station. That's This is an important one. Pit in is on your right-hand side here. Chrissy? So this straight is not a straight. Uh, it also has a hill. And the mm -hmm. hill is blind, right? Mm -hmm. So you're going to go mm -hmm. up and over the hill, and that is a little scary. There is a secret little X on the ground uh, that is where you, if you see it, you know that there's ground on the other side. Because at some point, if people are pinching you and feeling like you're on the too far on the left, that kind of that part of the track kind of pinches in because that's true. The part, it narrows. The part of where it, it narrows. narrows. There. So yeah. if you're going three wide over the over the hill sometimes it can feel like you're not sure if you're on the or at least i do not sure if you're on the track and when you get over that little hill so it can get a little dicey when it's really busy yeah, um, and i there's... think i'm right about where the peak of the hill is i know that's that's the bottom it's, of the hill no, you're, that's that, the you're, hill. That's past you're past pit, pit. pit in peak oh, of the hills back peak of the hill back back back, back 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 there's more. another there. also that's a, that's peak of the hill oh, 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 oh also another important flag station there because you can't always see what's happening if there's a car that's dead getting into pit lane uh sometimes that they'll, they'll that flag is pretty important yeah, because yeah. things stack up and there's an amazing amount of people who spin off the track here like i don't know anyone who's ever done that jeff it's it's at the straight like yeah. how are people screwing that up but it's just what Chris said. It's the unloading of the suspension that people end up not knowing where the track is because they didn't know about Chrissy's little X and they end up two wheels off on the other side. Yeah, they come up over the hill. The track tightens up just as their suspension's unloaded. They yank on the wheel to stay on the track and whoop, around they go. Yes, one go, only once. Yep. <laughs> going <laughs> So yeah, uh, uh, really I think fun, that's it. Really fun course. Uh, I'm going to mention that on Sunday afternoon, uh, some crazy MFR in a Cadillac limousine is going to like pass you right here, and you're going to go, "Where the hell did that come from?" Uh, yeah, this is this is like passing they, they, alley right in here. They unleash Half Dan on Sunday afternoon and put a big stake on the and, dash and say, you can have the stake if you get it. And, and he will pass you in pit lane and then come back out to the track. It is, this is not advised. Do yeah, not do no, that. No. And, and I really wish this had a better in, indication of the blend line. No. Yeah. You can't see it at all. The blend line is tough. Basically when you're on the track, you see the blend line. Stay off the blend line. When you yeah. come out of the pits, stay all the way right to turn one. They don't really like around. you um, driving over the blend line to during races either. No, that's that's verboten. Well, we've here, known people who have gotten here. Gotten it is flag for it. We had long discussions at pit when they said use the whole track. My my guy who wasn't you was like go over there, and I was like, but the blend line. He's like. But the, go over there. Yeah, your so, car doesn't need to. Well, so. I, I understand. I'm just saying yeah. that there are some places if you, it sounds like in some racing series, you can drive 
over the race and ha- use that as racing surface, but uh, not here, especially pit, with this many cars. Well, pit, Can you all pit, see it, what I zoomed in on, or is it like still? Yeah, but one? it's it's there, but you can't really see anything. It's fine. It's fine. Blend but line, in this in there. this in this track and this race, do not cross the blend line. Correct. No matter if you're coming in or out, do not cross it. You will get a flag. It's not worth the one car you just passed to get that flag. Seen it happen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Anything else anybody wants to add about driving around Thompson? No. The track's not that hard on tires. Your tires last pretty well there. I I, I just going to say one more one more time. The track walk to understand the surface differences at Thompson and the the undulations. It this looks flat when you're in the car. No. Yeah. And it's not flat. Ish. You know well, what I mean? You like, see, the, especially like, the places in Canberra. One yeah. is huge. You, it feels flat. Okay, some places feel flat. It's also because you know, because you've walked around it enough times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But you've when never you're done in it, the you driver's don't. seat looking ahead, you don't realize until you get there that all of these camber and surface changes are happening. And you just don't understand. Like, I think, I think a, a less experienced driver, one who has not done a lot of track walks, will not understand why corner X has less grip than corner Y or why people are over there when that's not where the line is. You know, this, I, I, I think this is, I wouldn't say it's, it's not like deceitful. It's not like, oh, I don't know what's happening here. It just it just doesn't feel like you're going up hills and down hills and doing transitions. Not to the extent that you are. Yeah. yeah. But the transitions are there and they're hard. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. Great. Anything else before we move on? I think that's it. I have a hella sweet or but terrible. Fantastic. That really oh. sounds like apex evasion. I, I Brilliant. let me go back to my thing. Hella sweet or but terrible. Oh, thank you. Proper transition. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy, did you know they made a movie about us? I think I heard this once or twice, but I don't know enough about it. So please tell me. You you have seen the movie. You're lying, but that's good. That's good acting. I'm I'm trying. I don't know. Saying they made a movie about us. It's a little generous. Well, (laughs) I mean, who's the star of the show, though? No. It's the Jeff Wakeman show. I, yeah. Okay. So backstory, if you go back and listen to, I don't know what show number it is. Uh, right. I will link it right there, right there on the YouTube. A long time ago. Uh, it was a long time ago. We talked to Jeremy Berger, who is the uh, director, producer. He was basically a documentary filmmaker guy who spent all of his own money and all of his own equipment and all of his own time and, uh, his, his lovely wife, Renee, uh, came out and followed us at a race and then came and watched us build cars. And then we didn't hear from him six months. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, he's hanging out with Tom Lamino this weekend. And then we're like, oh, look, he's hanging out with Yuri this weekend, like the next year. Like it, it was um, and it was predominantly shot at Thompson. Right. I mean, except for what he shot in your garage and that my Jersey, house. I think, too. Jer- Did you do Jersey? OK. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he followed us and he followed a couple of other friends around and he made a movie and I wish I had my trumpet. It's right all about now. lemons. That's the triumphant run. Uh, the debut of this movie is about to happen. The worldwide movie debut is happening at the, I'm trying to find it here in my notes here so I don't get it wrong. The... Um, I, I swear it's Burlington, I Vermont. It. It's a yes. film festival in Burlington, Vermont. I'll try to remember the name of it. Oh, I could have sworn I put it there. But anyway. Well, keep, keep talking. I'll find it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh, Middlebury. here it is. The Middlebury New Makers, New Filmmakers Festival. The Middlebury, so it's in the town of Middlebury, New Filmmakers Festival. It is called Hoopties, and it is premiering on Wednesday, August 25th at 2 p.m. And I will finish the plug and then I will get to the hella sweeter but terrible part. Um, Not only can you go to the film and watch this film, uh, if you are local to the area, uh, Jeremy is looking for 
people to bring their lemons car to park it outside the film showing. What if Bird is still up? I there? was just gonna say Bird's <laughs> up there. Absolutely. Sure. Um, That's about the only one, I think. And you um, can sit on the hood of your car and talk to everybody who just saw the film and goes, wow, this Lemons thing is cool. All right. Hella sweet or but terrible. Here's what it is. If you ever followed us idiots around for multiple years and then followed Yuri with his terrible probe and then Lamino with his absolutely terrible Fox. Rabbit that was GTI. the that was the fox still back then. Was that the fox? That was the fox. That's how I old that this was is. the first time sure? he melted down oh. the. G- no, it was the fox. Rabbit. I think he won B. But anyway, here's a oh, quick side note: Lamino's fox is probably going to be at Thompson oh, with a running terrible. sixteen valve engine, without not in Tom. It's three not owners not later. Tom. Wow, <laughs> that's that is the I, I'm going to say that fox was the worst Lemons car ever. It did like okay, real but lemons it's terrible. car, not yeah. IOE kind of car. Yeah. That car was terrible. Uh yeah. So here's the deal. Is it like smart? Not is it hella sweet or but terrible to not only waste a good portion of your life making this movie, but then asking people to judge it? S- smart, dumb, somewhere in the middle, hella sweet, but terrible. Chris, what are your thoughts? I was pleasantly surprised by the movie. You never know how these people are going to do with lemon stuff. You never know how they're going to do when they're watching you. They were realistic and fair and not creating drama. They found the drama that was already kind of there, but they didn't dwell on it. They didn't push it. It was more about understanding why this all happens and why we all do this. And I think they really did a nice job with it. So I'm going to say hella sweet. Not oh, my great. choice of hobby for to do all that editing, but you know, Jeremy did a nice job. Chrissy, I how second, sweet or but terrible? I second this. I think it's great. I mean, the video was great. It was, uh, and I feel like there have been uh, a handful that, especially the handful that we know of, of people that have tried to make videos about lemons because they think there's drama there is and they think there's something to watch and there is the problem is with endurance racing it's hard to capture endurance racing because it's kind of boring to watch for a very long time so i think the vi- the video's great watch it when it comes out on dvd or on disney plus or wherever it's not netflix DVD. netflix is gonna write him a get, check right something get it like at, that get it at red box get it on red box <laughs> yep uh i think it's great so but i didn't think this is where your question was going because it's not written down uh my thought it's your question was surprise fine oh, i think you're i i was picturing your question to be is it how sweet or but terrible that you are going to go there for a day to go watch your premiere and then come home to Ver- from vermont to new jersey that's but terrible if that was going to be your question of should I hey, go? If you oh. had a movie made about you, you'd go. I'd probably take Chrissy a few days does off. have a movie made about her and has decided not to go. Well, I, 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 you're going. I don't need to go. <laughs> Nobody's going to sign sign me. I'm not going to sign anything. You are. They're going to be like, this is the Jeff Wakeman show, and they're going to be like, oh, cool, that's that guy. Um, I, we can come up with some cars. <laughs> uh, but y- you going is Turnersville. And, to Middlebury, what five the, hours, 53 five minutes, hours. Oh, three, six hours, not 354 miles. Anyway, uh, if you're Vermont, I have a new car. I love to drive. If you're going to go to Vermont, like stay a couple of days. Stay Vermont a is day. a lovely, lovely place. Like go to Burlington. Like it's also, you know, there's August. so much, so much great things to do in Vermont. I would do that if it wasn't the week before school opens. It's August. So because it's the week before school opens, it is really hard for me to get more than you're like, a day. but I have to take off because there's a video being made about me that is made about me. And I have to go see it. As well. I don't plan on telling them nobody until listens. like, <coughs> oh, I'm not true. coming in today. Nobody, nobody I got knows. The COVID maybe. Oh, don't, don't say no, that. I'm not going to say that. No, no, no. My no. ball is fully aware that I'm taking off. Oh, yes. No, it's fine. And nobody I else. Joke. None of your friends listen to the show anyway. Uh, All right. Trying. So we have two hella sweets make the movie. Let it be judged because Jeremy has made a fantastic movie. Yep. And I'm not saying that just because it's the Jeff show starring Jeff. 
featuring under uh, understudies and <laughs> side shows with a couple other people. Yeah. Several of my coworkers, because I posted on, on the old Facebooks there, like, hey, they're making a movie and it's coming out and you should all go see it. They watched the trailer and several of them came to me and was like, every time you tell me about that, I go, I don't understand what's happening. And now I watch the trailer and I get it. Oh, wow. So I okay. think if people, people will more understand the insanity and the reason that we're doing it if they see the movie. So I want it to get as wide a release as possible. I want it to be free on Netflix or something so that I can show all my friends, not because it's the Jeff show, because I'm going to tell them how cool Lamino is and how all of my friends are and all that other stuff. And that's why it's cool to get it judged because Jeremy is awesome. True. So we got three good make of the movie, have it judged. I have one Jeff, you're nuts for going. I have one. Why are you going for only 24 hours? And I will add my wife that says, what are you nuts? Isn't that like eight hours? And what is Josh going to do all day? No, you're not allowed to take him to see the movie because you curse too much in the movie. So that is three but terrible for going to the movie. You don't curse in life. You just curse in the movie. He's also 11. He should He's 13. Sure, he, oh, 13. He curses right. like a sailor when your back is turned. I'm sure. Come on. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, well. All right. So I'll be going to this film and I will tell you all about it. And hopefully we are able to tell our listeners when and where they can see it on their own. Excellent. Hopefully somebody writes Jeremy a giant check for something and and he's able to stream it somewhere. You can see the trailer now at hoopteesfilm.com. Oh, good. Thanks for the plug. With link in the show notes. Yeah, that too. All righty then. All righty. I think we're ready then. to put this thing to bed. Fantastic. Okay. All right. Um, Hopefully you're not going to bed. Do we know no, what Jeff we're isn't doing going to bed for hours. Jeff, I meant the listeners. <clears throat> oh, yeah, they're driving to the track right now. Yeah, no, no, put to it bed. to bed means we wrap up the I show. I know. Goodness. Yeah, we actually do know what we're doing next oh week. Oh, my we're God, doing, we know what's going we're on. We're doing the Thompson hangover because that's what we do after every race we'll is the hangover because that's how, how you when, feel how for the week did. after the race. Oh, it's the worst. By Wednesday, it's hopefully, the, we'll be rec- The race hangover is real. Oh, my God. Can't wait. I, I, I only suffer the race. This, this race is tough because sometimes it's really hot and you mm-hmm. get really dehydrated. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Thompson Drink hangover, water, everyone. And then the week after Drink that, we don't know. We know we're doing something because mental yeah, still not we here. Do. We do. And then an the idea. week after that, maybe the ask me anything. The, yeah. Just listen. send us we'll your questions. You. We don't know. We'll figure no. it out. We'll figure it out. Be prepared right right for the live show. Think Sometimes. about a costume. We're not going to see you. I'm we joking. wear costumes. Oh, I just thought of one more thing to tell everyone for Thompson. Oh, oh, go ahead. There's, there's no power in the paddock. Bring generators. Oh, good call. Good call. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's all. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you all for listening to us. Thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. Am I not close enough? There it was go. turned down good. a little. Yeah. Uh, we'll hope you join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you're going to Thompson, come on over and say hi. I'll be the one in the mask because you idiots out there didn't get your vaccination. And now the Delta variant is here. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, pound the like button and hit the little bell. Oh, my gosh. It turned off again. I'm going to do it without music. Finish up. Doing it live. Yes. Uh, talk to us down there in the doodly do. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, then you can go to iTunes. Give us a five star rating. Tell us why you like us or why you hate us. As long as you give us five stars uh if you have any questions or show ideas or want to tell us an ama question drop a comment on our facebook page everyone racers or email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com you can still text mental even though he's not here he'll be back soon 484-243-0455 find us on instagram or twitter at everyone.racers thanks again and until next week keep the shiny side up And unless you don't have a shiny side, then just keep those wheels down. Stop button. Where are you?
waiting.